What's up guys, David Wanted 797 here back with another video. Now today I wanted to talk about uh, the iPhone event launch and just quickly recap and give my point of view on a few different things that they announced. So the first thing that they mentioned at the keynote was the Apple Watch Series 3. Probably the biggest upgrade to the Apple Watch since it came out, one of the coolest upgrades I think. Some of the main features are it now has cellular which I think is what a lot of people were waiting for with the Apple Watch. It was the biggest thing I think some fitness gurus uh, wanted to be able to go for a run, not have to carry their phone with them. They just take the watch and not miss a call or make an emergency call if they had to. Some of the other features they've done are upgrades to the heart rate app. So now the heart rate app actually tracks your heart rate throughout the day and works out your typical resting heart rate. It will then alert you if your heart rate is elevated at a time when it thinks you're not moving. Uh, I haven't been able to test this. I do love the new heart rate app, but my Series Zero does not have that heart rate feature. One thing I took out of it as well that I thought was cool was Siri now talks back to you, which I think is a great feature. I always found it a bit weird that if I activated Siri on my watch, she didn't say anything back to me and I actually had to pay attention to what was on the screen. It was really weird and made using Siri a little bit hard. Now probably the coolest thing I thought with the Apple Watch Series 3, now this has to do with it having cellular, was you can now stream Apple Music through your Apple Watch. So you can go for a run, leave your phone at home and stream any song on your Apple Watch. I think that's probably the coolest thing that they could have done. Like that is, to me, that is just awesome. You, there's no limit in space. You just stream any song you want. Now something I picked up uh, here in Australia, if you're like me and with Telstra, they actually offer unmetered Apple Music. So if you're using Apple Music, it doesn't come out of your regular monthly data allowance for your plan. So for Series 3 owners out there in Australia with Telstra, you're going to be able to stream your Apple Music through your watch and you don't have to worry about going over your data limit. Moving on, the next thing I wanted to talk about was Apple TV 4K. Really cool upgrade, doesn't really interest me that much. I do have an old Apple TV Series 3 from a few years ago that I mainly use now to stream Netflix and sometimes stream from my iMac here behind me. So really good to see an upgrade. It doesn't really make sense uh, for me seeing as I don't have a 4K TV. iPhone 8, the iPhone 8 came out, was mentioned first, and there's been quite a number of upgrades that Apple have done. They are keeping the same sort of form factor design which I'm going to talk about in another video, but for this video, just recapping the event. New design obviously incorporates wireless charging, water resistance is still there. Louder speakers, which I still think is really cool. We now have stereo speakers on the iPhones. I'm still rocking my old 6S, so I haven't yet been able to fully experience uh, stereo speakers. I have seen it with other people's phones. New camera with the new lighting features. So obviously great that they're doing an interim upgrade to the camera. I can understand why Apple didn't use the 7S name brand. It's a bit of a marketing trick. They don't want people to think they're buying an older model iPhone. When it is realistically a new, newer iPhone, they don't want them to think they're getting the last year's, you know, 7S uh, iteration. You know, it's just a spec bump. It's not something new. And of course, iPhone 10. Now iPhone 10, I think is technically the new iPhone compared to the iPhone 8. The display is now OLED, we've got Face ID, the cameras, we've got dual cameras on the front, the camera on the back now has dual optical image stabilization, but of course the price for the iPhone 10 is quite high. I understand why Apple set this up this way. They see the iPhone 8 as an iteration of the iPhone for people, I guess like myself, running an old 6S and some people running old 6s who want to get a new phone, but they don't really care about the new features in the iPhone 10. While yes, it provides these customers with a great cheap alternative, at the same time, it doesn't really progress the iPhone line. It's, it stagnates it a little bit and separates it. So my thoughts are the iPhone 10 is obviously the next big iPhone. It is the 2017 iPhone. The iPhone 8 isn't, it's realistically a redesigned 7, but it does have some really cool features and I still think it's a worthy upgrade for um, people who are on old 6s and 6s. Other than that guys, just a quick recap of the keynote. I want to put together a video, probably straight after this one that I'm going to put out, where I just want to talk about how Apple's product line now with the iPhone 8 and the iPhone 10, how it might be getting a little bit confusing, but I'll save that for the next one. If you enjoyed this one, subscribe for more and hit that like button. See you.